Crypt Keeper Clint from House of Tortured Souls here with the one and the only Felissa Rose. I love you. I love you. <laughs> so, 2018, 35th anniversary of Sleepaway Camp. Ooh, 30, that's crazy. 35 years. And we're still celebrating Sleepaway Camp. Woo! <laughs> so, when you guys were making this movie, Yes. I love the little cheap ones. <laughs> when you guys were making the movie, talk about some of the you know, the differences then compared to now. Because you just finished Victor Crowley, which we're going to talk about in a second. Yes. Well, I mean, the differences in horror movie making, it's just, I shot Sleepaway Camp on film. You know, now we're digital. Um, however, the beautiful thing is that from, at that time, we were still doing practical effects, and most of the movies I do now are practical effects, so that's awesome. Um, the roles have gotten better, the scripts are way more exciting and intense. Just lucky to still be making the horror movies, you know, from now until today. From did then you, until today. Did you ever think that Sleepaway Camp would be a generational film? No, I mean, I never really thought anyone would see Sleepaway Camp. You know, it was like a little labor of love and it was a small slasher movie and it wasn't anything that we thought would have such a, a you know, huge following. Now we're in 20, you know 2018. Victor Crowley is out. This is this is one of those where let her get her little plug in. <laughs> this is one of those. No one knew that it was coming out. You guys did such a great job of keeping this. You know, they say that for three people to keep a secret, two of them have to be dead. Yet no <laughs> one leaked this thing, and all of a sudden, surprise! There's a fourth Victor Crowley movie. I know it was. Uh... It was very difficult to keep that secret. We all wanted to kind of shout it from the rooftop. So I'm making a Hatchet 4 movie. But uh, but we did keep it because we knew it would be that much more exciting once it was released. And I have to say, you know, Adam Green did an unbelievable job, not only with the writing and directing, as he is the best, um, but keeping that secret it was just perfect for this movie. Another movie I want to talk about, um, it is near and dear to my heart because in the last month I, I think I have, I've become like your guys' unofficial yes. um, publicity saying. rep for the movie No Solicitors. No Solicitors. And we made that several years ago, I don't know if you know that. Yeah, 2015. Yes, 2015. And that was another film that we did because we just wanted to make a really cool horror movie and get a great group of actors together. If you notice, I mean, Beverly Randolph is one of my dear friends, and um, Jason Maxson, uh, so many people in that are, are near and dear to my heart. John Callison, great job writing and directing, and we had a lot of fun making it. And I, I, I've talked to John, I've talked to Jason, I've talked to Kim, and they kind of say that you were the ringleader in getting that cast together. <laughs> is that what they say? Um, it was fun, because you always want to work with your friends. So I think it was just sort of natural um, at the time. It was like, hey, you want to do this? You want to do that? And we just kind of naturally came together. Now, I've heard some great stories about the first table reading where Jason exactly. and Kim kind of figured out something tongue in cheek. Are they sister and brother? Or are they banging? <laughs> that was their question at the table reading. Are we, like, do something more than just sisterly, brotherly love? Oh, uh, it's such a great movie, and you can't go to Walmart now without seeing the Felissa Rose rack. And, you know, you've got Hatchet, or Victor Crowley, you've got No Solicitors, and another movie that just came out recently, Family Possessions. I love Family Possessions because I love Tommy Faircloth. I actually met Tommy Faircloth at um, Days of the Dead Atlanta, and his booth was right next to mine, and we had a great time over a little bit of Fireball. And he said, hey, do you want to... Fireball. Fireball. Do you want to, you know, make a movie together? Yeah. And the next thing I knew, I saw the script of Family Possessions, and I heard Mark Patton was in it, who I love from Hello. So it all, you know, that was also another wonderful experience. So what is coming up next? Because I talked to one of our mutual friends, Sarah French. Her cover picture is from a new movie that she's working on. Yeah. So uh, we just wrapped a new mob movie. Now I did Garlic and Gunpowder with Harrison Smith. That comes to Netflix next month. But now I did another mob movie called Booze, Bronze, and Blackjack, which stars Joe Rafa, Sarah French, Vincent Pastore from The Sopranos, 
and Vincent Ward from The Walking Dead, and James Duvall, my buddy from Garlic and Gunpowder. Um, and we just made this really intense, dramatic, wonderful film written by Carl Nacida, who's a book originally. And then it was directed by my dear friend Ricky Byrne, who I love. So. And lastly, we are five, count them, five days away from the theatrical release of Death House, a movie I got to see with you last June. And <laughs> thank you. I have been screaming to anyone who will listen, go see this on February 23rd. If they ask where's it, I have a list like on my phone at any given we were, time. We were at a party last night and all I see is, um, yeah, what city do you live in? Um, okay, it's playing there. Okay, good, good. <laughs> Amazing. Lynn is the official spokesperson for any movie I do because he's not only a spectacular person, but he's so lovely with the way he supports and um, just spreads the word on all of these films. Well, I'm looking forward to it. I know you guys are too. This has been something that has been brewing for years. This is Gunner's movie. And go see it for Gunner. <laughs>